Okay. In the previous video, I mentioned that I was going to do a separate video about which network cable you need. Well, you've arrived at that video. If you didn't watch the last video about the tools you need to pull cables through your home yet, go do so. Well, or watch this video first. It doesn't really matter. There's been a lot of controversy about what network cable you need, what is good enough, what you should get for future proofing and things like that. And if you search around on the internet, you'll, follow, you'll find thousands of different opinions, most of which contradict each other. And so what's going on? What do you need? What should you get? Or at least in my opinion, should you get? And what are the difference between these cables? To start off, when I talk about network cables, I'm 99% of the time I'm talking about Ethernet cables. There used to be lots of different type of cables, but since the history, whatever, uh, two types have basically remained, and that's Ethernet, which is copper cabling, and fiber cabling. Now, 99% of, of the time, you won't need any fiber cabling in your home. It won't do you any good, it won't be any faster for you, and it won't have any other magical benefits that some people think it has. There are use cases for fiber, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. So let's start off talking about some bullet points for what you need to look for when you're looking for ethernet or networking cables. Get a cat. They make nice trippy noises on your floor. No. <laughs> so the most important thing to look for when buying new network cable is that it's 100% copper. Over the recent years, people uh, or manufacturers have started bringing out substandard cables, which they'll say will work well enough. But in reality, if you make them longer than like five or maybe 10 meters, they won't work. Uh, or they'll give you a degraded signal or your link will cut out or all kinds of uh, bad things will happen. So if whenever a cable says CCA, which stands for copper clad aluminium or CSA or anything like that, if it's not 100% copper, do not buy it. It will give you all kinds of trouble in the end. And well, the, the cheaper price really isn't worth it. When talking about cabling, there's two types of cables you can get. You can get solid cable or solid wire cable or stranded cable, and they each have their own purpose. Solid cable is meant for long lengths and for being pulled through the wall. They have a bit better signal and they're built to withstand the strain of being pulled through pipes and stuff like that. Stranded cables, on the other end, are more flexible and they're mostly meant for shorter lengths. So when looking at length calculations for your cables, the maximum of 100 meter actually takes into account of having a maximum of 10 meters of stranded cable to begin with, then 80 meters of solid core cable to pull through your walls and conduits and stuff like that, and then again, having 10 meters of stranded patch cable to connect to your device. So as long as the total remains 100 meters, you're within specifications and it should work just fine. Uh, but that's how it's officially intended. Stranded cable isn't intended to be 50 meters or 80 meters or 100 meters. Most of the time it'll work, but get just get the right kind of cable. Especially when pulling through conduit, a stranded cable will suffer uh, too much when pulling it through. Of course, if you used stranded cable in your wall or in your conduit or whatever, and it's working fine, there's no real need to replace it. Just when doing new installations, get the right kind of cable. When looking on the internet for cable, it used to be pretty easy. You basically had CAT5E. 
and you got cat 5e or before that cat 5 and cat 5 was for one and a bit and cat 5e was for gigabit Nowadays, you have Cat 5e, Cat 6, Cat 6a, Cat 7, Cat 7a, and even Cat 8. What the hell? Well, basically, as I see it, Cat 5e and Cat 6 are meant for gigabit. Cat 6a and Cat 7 are meant for 10 gigabit. And if you want to be sure, that, if you want to be sure that you can use 40 gigabits in the future, Cat either uh, well, not even cat 7a which also s exists uh, but isn't rated for 40 gigabit if you really want 40 gigabit get cat 8 and you'll be certified for 40 gigabit now most of the time a lower specification cable will work as for instance cat 7 is rated for 100 meters of 10 gigabits but it will probably do like 30 or 40, maybe 50 meters of 40 gigabits also. So keep that in mind when buying your cable. More about this later on. So as I mentioned before, Cat 5e has been the standard for a long while. But now that Cat 6 and 7 and 8 are there, what are really the differences between these cables? And why should you get one above the other? So looking at Cat 5e and Cat 6, basically the biggest change is that within the cable itself, a plastic stiffener was added, which also forces uh, a tighter twist than in Cat 5e. Going from Cat 5 or Cat 6 to Cat 6a, the gauge of the wires inside of the cable change from AWG 24 to 23. So there's literally more copper in there. Going from CAT 6A to CAT 7, the gauge of the wire stays the same, but the stiffener is removed. And uh, CAT 7 is a, a type of cable called PIMF, which stands for pair in metal foil. That means that each of the four pairs of cables are individually sleeved in metal foil and then the whole cable is sleeved in a mesh and then there's the plastic cover. So this is automatically a shielded cable. What do you mean shielded? It has a, does it have a shield? Can it protect against swords? Well, not really. Not like that. But it has metal foil which keeps out uh, outside interference, be it another cable or a power line or a coax coaxial cable or Wi-Fi interference even or cell phone interference. Any type of radio signal that would otherwise penetrate the cable is basically shielded. So for CAT 5E and CAT 6 and sometimes CAT 6A even, there are shielded and unshielded variations. And there's a big controversy talk about all of this on the internet. I mean, shielded is useless at home. No, no, you need to get shielded and blah, blah, blah. Basically, if one of your cables is run in the same pipe using coaxial cable or a power line and crosses it or it runs next to a microwave or an elevator or something like that, something which can cause interference, shielded will help so in theory a shielded cable is always better than an unshielded cable but that doesn't mean the unshielded cable maybe wouldn't have been enough in your situation so do you need shielded cable i cannot tell you it, most of the time unshielded works fine that's why we're all using utp unshielded twisted pair but as I mentioned, shielded is always better. So I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody will be able to tell you if you need it or not. So yeah, <laughs> take it or leave it. So some uh, random bits of good information. Running cables through pipes. If you use Cat5e or probably Cat6, 
you can get away with getting two cables in a 5 8 inch pipe. If, on the other end, you wish to run CAT 6A or CAT 7, you will need a 3 4 inch pipe to get two cables in there. It, it's, 5 8 is impossible. I tried. It won't happen. <laughs> um, going up CAT 7A and CAT 8, I'm not even sure you can get two cables in 3 4 inch pipe. Um, we'll have to see about that in the future. But... Basically, if you buy CAT7, get 3 4 inch. If you stick with CAT5e and CAT6, 5 8 should be fine. Or you can probably get 3 or 4 in a 3 4 inch. So make sure you take that into account when uh, you're putting in conduit. Yes, another good tip. If you wish to run two or more cables inside of the same conduit, get multiple length, or no, not multiple lengths, get multiple spools. If you only have one spool, you want to run two or three cables at the same time, you'd have to basically measure how long the pipe in your wall is or how long the conduit is, and then cut off the lengths at the right length and then pull them all through. That's a big hassle. It'll cost you a lot more time, etc. Most of the time, you'll want to run two cables in the same conduit. So get two spools and use my DIY easy cable roller you saw in the previous video. I'll uh, link it up, uh, I don't know, here, here, I don't know, YouTube magic will do the rest. But make sure you get uh, not one big length, but two shorter lengths if you want to run them at the same time. Uh, last bit of information, uh, terminating hardware is also important. If you use CAT5e or CAT6, you can use the normal UTP plug to crimp on your cable. If, on the other hand, you're using CAT6a or CAT7 or CAT7a or CAT8 even, you will need to use keystones. And through, again, video YouTube magic, they will magically appear here, and I'll show you what all these are. I'm not going into too much detail right now, but just know that for different types of cables, and especially wire gauge thickness, you will need different types of plugs. It's not like it has been for the last 10 years. Cat5e, Cat6, always the same plugs, always fits. No, get the right type of uh, termination equipment and plugs to for the cable type you have. Otherwise, you'll, again, have all kinds of intermittent problems, and they'll be very hard to figure out. More about these plugs and keystones in one of the next videos where I will show you how I'm terminating the cables I'm currently pulling through the house and what I'm attaching to it. So, last section, what type of cable did I choose and why? Well, if you watched my previous video, you will have already seen I chose CAT7 cable. So why did I choose more expensive CAT7 cable above CAT5e if I'm running gigabit, well, for now, I am running gigabit, but storage and all kinds of computer hardware has been tenfold increased in bandwidth over the last few years. We've, had, we've gotten SSDs and multiple RAID arrays, even a single two or four or six, eight, whatever, 10 terabyte disk is faster than a gigabit connection. In, even my phone achieves three, four hundred megabits over Wi-Fi. So gigabit is slow. Gigabit is old. Get this in your ears. I know you think gigabit is still suited for everything. But 10 years ago, they thought, why the hell would you need gigabit? Everything had 100 Mbit. And what the hell do we need gigabit for? Now gigabit is standard. So Keep that in mind when thinking about pulling cables through your walls. You don't want to start have to replace cables in your walls every five or six or maybe ten years. So when you do it, or at least in my opinion, when you do pull them in there, get the ones you can keep the, in there longest. Even if it's a 30 or 40% price premium uh, above the, the CAT5e cable, which CAT7 is, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. So in my case, I'm still running gigabit on everything, but 
early 2017, I plan on migrating one of my workstations and my storage server to 10 gigabit because of, well, <laughs> editing these videos, uh, which causes me to uh, transfer large, large files uh, to and from my storage server a lot of times. So 10 gigabit will certainly help there. And as I mentioned before, Although CAT7 isn't officially rated for 40 gigabit yet, I suspect that for shorter lengths, like 20, 30 meters, maybe 40, 50, uh, 40 gigabit should be uh, fine using CAT7 also. But only future can tell about that. Recently, they did introduce a little but into what I just told you. We used to have one gigabit and 10 gigabit. And 10 gigabit has been uh, used in enterprise situations and servers have it and switches and interconnects and all kinds of stuff is using it but on the desktop side and consumer side we've stayed at one gigabit partially because cables will need to be replaced and if you have this giant office building with cat 5e everywhere you don't really want to rip out all the cable and replace it for CAT 6A or CAT 7 to get 10 gigabit to desktops. At least, not yet. So, basically to kind of circumvent that problem and to still push forward technology-wise, they've introduced 2.5 gigabit and 5 gigabit. The reason these now exist is because you can run 2.5 gigabit over CAT 5E and you can then run 5 gigabit over CAT 6. So you don't need to replace the cabling to your clients. You can still use the existing cabling and still get a higher bandwidth. So I'm hoping this will ease the transition to higher bandwidths and that CAT uh, 2.5, 5 and 10 gigabits will become more standard, which means also the price for these, this, these types of uh, network cards and switches and routers and stuff like that will become cheaper. And who knows, maybe in another 10 years, we'll think about gigabit as we do now of 100 Mbit. We'll have to see. Maybe I'll make another video. So, hopefully this taught you a little bit more about network cabling and what the differences are between these cables. And, well, I don't like telling people what they need to get, but explaining to you what in what situations you should get which type of cable. Uh, if you want to be on the safe side, just get CAT7, and it, it will always, always work for everything. But if you're on a budget, and uh, you only need a few runs of cable, and you're not going to be running anything else than gigabit, or 2.5 or 5 gigabit, within a few, within 10 years, uh, maybe CAT6 will be good enough for you, and you can save some pennies. So, uh, there's going to be an associated blog post which will have most of the same information in text form be sure to check that out i think i'm going to make a big box here you can click on it just you know hit the box and um subscribe to the channel to see future videos about the house and uh the cable pooling and tips like that and uh yeah hope to see you soon bye bye